welcome to another episode of Get Tech Smart Global Explosion, where I'm going around the world uh, virtually. Uh, and this is for the LinkedIn Accelerator Program, Technology and Innovation. And today I'm really excited because I'm in Dubai. I've always wanted to visit Dubai, <laughs> but not really virtually, but I will get there one day. <laughs> Uh, so yeah. for my guest today, please uh, welcome Noel uh, Mamoudi. I am so excited to have you here because you are a uh, co-founder and CEO of Value Grid, which is using artificial intelligence for decision making, but decision making particularly in the legal department. So welcome. How are you doing today? Hi, Flo. Hi. Thanks for having me. I'm doing great. Thank you. Well, really it's, yeah, it's a pleasure to have you here. And I've really been looking to kind of dig deep with someone about, you know, AI solutions. Uh, and it just so happens is AI solutions for legal tech. So tell us more about uh, Value Grid and, and what solutions are currently being offered. So as you describe it at the start of this conversation is that we build AI solutions. They are cross industry solutions that we apply for better decision making. So part of our portfolio are the uh, contracts, legal compliance, and more generally legal tech matters. When we look at it, we look at it in a more integrated way. We don't build um, solution that applies only to the legal departments or the contract or compliance or finance. We try to look into it as a, as a portfolio of tools that the, um, the members of the functions utilize to basically support their operations. Yeah, that, that is fantastic. So I feel like it's like a all in one tool, right? So it's not just that you're getting just a CLM, but you also like, as you mentioned, you have the compliance issues, uh, you have some the regulatory issues. So okay. let's dig a little bit deeper into that. So uh, in terms of regulatory, are there any specific areas that that you're focused on focusing on, so like, for example, data privacy? Yeah, actually, that we what we built First, we applied it to contract and compliance matters. So for instance, the tool that we use for um, data and information extraction, um, we apply it across basically all sorts of documents. We call that document intelligence. So whether you are looking at a thousands, hundreds of thousands of documents and you want to understand your data privacy um, clause and not simply in the data privacy uh, statement, but across documents and you want to compare them and compare them with your regulations, different regulations and um, internal documentations and policies, we built a tool that is um, adaptable basically to the customer's request. So we do that in modular uh, way. Basically, you come flow and you need to compare your data privacy policy to the rest of the policies of other companies or to the regulation with what is happening with your current contracts, right? So we build solutions that basically adapt to the requirements of the, of the customer. Yeah, that's what that is one. Yes, no, sorry, sorry. That is one example of how we look into it. Now we are expanding and we are doing uh, more when it comes to uh, regulatory. So, for instance, whether you are looking at institution sorts of regulament, re regulatory documents and documentations and so on and so forth, so we can extract these type of information and put it into graphs and visual, so that the users are not going through documents, you know, and compare them and trying to to understand what is in there. So we try to make it as easy as possible using interactive and visual aspects for the users. Yeah. And so, you know, I've been around the world interviewing various people uh, in legal tech and how is legal tech uh, community in, in Dubai? What What is, uh, I, I guess, are, are, are people really looking to adopt, uh, and embrace and implement uh, legal technology, or are you getting some pushback? We, I would say that whether in Dubai or in the, the Gulf region and in the region overall, the, the issues are similar. So there is a there is a big push and there is a, a big willingness to apply those tools and to work with the developers and to work with the community of the tech community, basically to, to create those tools. Lots of companies and it's very hectic. Um, I would say that similar to the rest of the world, the implementation is, is slightly um, more difficult, 
right? So implementing the tool and working with the users and understanding whether they are they are using it, whether they are enjoying it, how do they see um, the features that you know they have already in the tool? Do they want to build on top of that, right? So I would say that when you deploy a standard tool, the issue is it, and I, I see it, I've lived through that. Um, you are given a tool and basically it doesn't meet uh, your requirement. You, you don't need uh, just a standard document. You want to apply it to your specific needs, your team's needs, um, sometimes your regional needs or your language needs, right? So I would say that uh, the market is booming everywhere. Um, but now I think we need to get into the implementation by uh, having and listening to the users themselves um, and then, you know, applying uh, the tool in a more consistent way, I would say. Yeah, I know that makes sense. And and we're seeing an increase in, in the legal tech sector uh, of uh, a lot of companies um, running to implement um artificial intelligence. So why AI? Uh, how? Why is it really beneficial uh, to mm -hmm. legal solutions, especially for decision making? Yeah. So such a good question. So the, the world, um, the, the concept of AI actually is broader than what we believe, whether we are speaking about natural language processing, whether we are speaking about machine learning tools or some advanced uh, analytic um, type of, you know, uh, features. So it's a portfolio of basically of features AI, right? And it's constantly moving and constantly expanding. So the way I believe, and I'm sure of that actually, is that the legal department of 20 years ago can no longer apply the same um, way of working today. You, you cannot do that. You, can, you need to follow the, the speed, the technology and the needs basically. So if 10 years ago, people were highlighting contracts mm -hmm. manually and then extracting the information, then losing it in some sort of dashboards or, or Excel spreadsheet and then comparing it with the tender documents and then being lost. And we all lived through that. Today, we have the intelligence to, to do that for us, basically, and to help us being more organized, compare our information and then get it all basically aligned to to the business and to 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 basically to the 21st century yeah moving into the 21st century where we're not printing and manually highlighting documents uh yeah that, that's, that's and I, think the, I think the basic example and i think uh, as as the rest and i'm so sorry Flo, to to expand on my answer here but similar to the rest of the uh, of of the um, of the industries and and the functions i mean you see the the financial sector is slightly ahead actually way ahead of the of the legal sector and and they embrace the technology and they are applying it um on a daily basis now and i think i think the legal the departments contract compliance have a have a real opportunity today to leverage the the uh, ai tools the machine learning the natural language processing to help their teams perform better you know so right um i mean do you think that there's there's that fear of having you know uh the ai be autonomous and and, and be the the sole decision maker do you think that some of that has to do with the fear of letting go and 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 letting AI and automation take over? In, in my experience and to in my actual in my previous experience and in today's experience, actually people are not looking into this in particular, not not the uh, you know uh, AI machines running around and taking decisions for you, but it actually goes back to more basic fears, which are uh, you know do I really need to use this tool? Would it give me more work actually? And I need to go through through all of the deployment phase and then uh, see the results of of this tool. I think I think it's a simple fear of embracing something new, um, which the legal departments unfortunately are not used to. So really, right. really big. Yeah. So what's the message then? What what because I mean you and I, uh, you know, we're we're familiar with the benefits uh, of of using artificial intelligence. Just just as, as you mentioned, you know, hey, you know, you're not gonna have to print and, and highlight, you know, that manual labor, uh, you know, uh, can be taken off your plate. 
Uh, it's going to be a lot easier uh, when the AI knows exactly what your legally approved language is, and it can automatically highlight for you when, especially when you receive a third party paper. Um, so what's the message? You know, what is the selling point of how you get people to realize, you know, here's what the benefits are for using uh, legal solutions that, that do have AI capabilities? Yeah, so definitely the, the psychological component is big, right? So sitting with people and talking to them and taking them, taking their hands and making them understand um, that this, this is a good tool for them. And, you know, we have seen in other companies that they improve the efficiency with this type, you know, of, uh, of percentage and so on and so forth. However, I believe that it goes back to um, to to more, um, to one step back, actually, is when you are performing your work, and you've done it for the, the same, you know, the, the same way over and over and over. And you don't have time to basically lift your head up and say, hey, maybe there's a better tool to do it. <laughs> it up. Um, curiosity. So the way I speak to uh, newly graduate or young lawyers, the new generation of lawyers basically is be curious. So you arrive in a company or you arrive in a firm and you are given um, you know the standard uh, working procedure as to how to review a contract or how to perform a compliance review or an investigation is okay you do it and you you gain a lot from this as an experience however do you see a better way to do it and talk to people so the best way is search information I mean Google is is, is, is on itself, uh, you know, um, a source of information as basic as it is. However, it takes you through, oh, wow, I can extract information actually. And I compare this 50 documents, I can have it done, you know, quicker, maybe not 100% the way I would want to do it. However, I can do it. I'm performing an audit and I'm doing my action items and the follow up. This Excel spreadsheet that is completely corrupt and is not aligned with what we are doing today, can I do it in a better way? So I would say that when you start to be curious and you start thinking as to how you do it better, um, you will be you know, attracted to finding solutions and tools that are existing out there. So I would say that managers you know, and, and senior teams could sit with their teams and be just open as to look. Um, this is how you are doing your work today. Do you see a better way to do it? Because lawyers and contract managers and compliance people are overloaded all the time. In any company, in any given company, when you talk to the different functions, the legal team is the last one to shut the light, you know? Yeah. So it's it so there has to be a better way and it's and it's coming, right? And I think this type of conversation is 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 part of it, you know. People will listen to it and they will be like, Yeah, actually that makes sense, right? So Hopefully there will be an impact with, you know, more discussions like this. Yeah, no, I, I love everything that you are doing uh, in Dubai. You're, I wanted to put a spotlight because uh, I'm sure when people think Dubai, they're not thinking legal tech, right? Uh, it's, yes. it's a well-known <laughs> vacation <laughs> spot. <laughs> Uh, yes. shopping spot for celebrities or anybody else who can afford to travel there. So I'm happy we have the opportunity to talk so that people are aware of, uh, you know, the legal tech that's coming out of Dubai. Yeah, so it's fantastic. Any last words about AI and and, and just lawyers? Uh, yeah, I think it goes back to, to, to the previous point. So it's it's expanding, it's going quick, it's going fast. People should jump into the train without being afraid that, you know, this is something that might take them somewhere that they don't know, but actually it will take them somewhere uh, in, a, in a better shape and faster. And that gives them, you know, the quality that the company looks like. At and the 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 time to basically learn other aspects of the business and just just not be overloaded um, on a daily basis. Well, that's a great message and a great way to end. Thank you so much for your time today. I truly appreciate it. I I, I learned quite a lot. I would never would really have uh, put a pin on the map and, and think Dubai and legal tech at all. So this was a great learning experience and exposure for me. And this is exactly why I'm doing this series is to put a spotlight on disruptors like yourself uh, who are really, you know, contributing a lot uh, to uh, the technology sector. So thank you so much again for uh, chatting with me. Yeah.
Thanks for what you're doing. Thank you. Thanks. And thank you to everyone else for watching. Stay tuned for more episodes of Get Tech Smart Global Explosion.